Royal Air Force Station Lindholm or more simply RAF Lindholm is a former Royal Air Force Station in South Yorkshire, England. It was located 3. 9 miles south of Thorn and 6. 9 miles northeast of Doncaster and was initially called RAF Hatfield Woodhouse. RAF Lindholm started life as an expansion scheme aerodrome built on the wide expanse of Hatfield Moors, some 7 miles east of Doncaster. The site, to the east of the A614 Thorn to Bawtry Road, was a mile south of the small village of Hatfield Woodhouse, the name first selected for the new station, however. Stores and correspondence was getting waylaid between the station and Hatfield Aerodrome in Hertfordshire, so in August 1940, the name was changed to Lindholm. Work began in the spring of 1938 taking in approximately 250 acres of pasture for the airfield itself and a further 150 for the camp and support facilities. Three Type C hangars fronted the southwest side of the bombing circle, with a fourth and fifth behind the two outer hangars. The administration, technical and barrack area lay alongside the A614. As was common with these expansion scheme airfields, the construction of buildings took place over several months and the pace was only quickened by the outbreak of war. Officially opened in June 1940 under No. 5 Group, No. 50 Squadron RAF and its Hamptons arrived at the following month. No. 50 was the sole resident at Lindholm until June 1941, when a new Canadian manned bomber squadron No. 408 Squadron RCAF was raised there. The squadron was equipped with Hamptons and, once having found its feet, it was moved to Syreston to begin operations in July. The following month, Lindholm was one of a number of No. 5 Group stations handed over to No. 1 Group, as a result of which No. 5 Group moved its No. 50 Squadron to RAF Swinderby. From RAF Syreston, No. 1 Group moved in two of the Polish squadrons under its charge, No's. 304 and 305, both flying Vickers Wellingtons. These two squadrons, having been operational since April, continued their contribution to Bomber Command's offensive from the new station throughout the following winter. In May 1942, No. 304 Squadron was detached to assist RAF Coastal Command but the detachment soon became an assignment and did not return to RAF Bomber Command. Two months later no. 305 Squadron was transferred to RAF Hemswell to concentrate Polish manned bomber squadrons on one station. During the first two years of war, a bomb store had been constructed on the far side of the A614 as had a taxi spur with three pan hard standings. A perimeter track and over 30 pan hard standings had also been built during this period. By 1942 Lindholm was due for upgrading and the construction of concrete runways was put in hand. However, extension of the airfield was somewhat restricted by the Hatfield Moor drain on the eastern boundary but more land was acquired to the north necessitating the closure of two roads, one to the hamlet of Lindholm. Because of these physical restrictions, only two runways were built, 14-32 and 04-22, both of which were extended to 1,400 yards and 2,000 yards respectively. A new bomb store was fashioned on land to the north of the station, which resulted in obstruction of seven pan dispersal points. Two others were lost due to the construction of a new perimeter track. Even so, this station ended up with 41 pans and one loop type. A few additional campsites were added to the south of the main area giving the station maximum accommodation for 2,192 men and 365 females. Reopened for flying in late October 1942, no. 1,656 heavy conversion unit moved in with a few Avro Lancasters and Avro Manchesters from RAF Brighton to serve no. One group's conversion to the former type. Now an operational training base, over the next two years Lindholm was host to other units with an instructional mission. Both Lancaster and Handley Page Halifax crews were tutored here with no. 1,667 HCU being established on the airfield in June 1943, moving out to RAF Faldingworth in October. In November the same year, no. One Lancaster finishing school was activated using existing flights with a similar mission. On November 3, 1944, the station became no. 71 base under the new training organization, no. 7 Group RAF. Meanwhile, no. 1,656 HCU remained at Lindholm until November 1945 when many Bomber Command units were disbanded. During the war, a total of 76 bombers were lost on operations flying from this airfield, 40 Hamptons, 35 Wellingtons and a single Lancaster. The immediate post-war years found no's. 
57 and 100 squadrons with their Lincolns in residence from May to September 1946. Wellingtons joined Lindholm with no. 5 Air Navigation School Wellington T.10S, Avro Ansons, and also three Vickers Valettas, coded A, B, and C. In November 1952 things changed quite dramatically. When Bomber Command Bombing School arrived from RAF Scampton, using up to 18 Lincolns and 8 Varsities. In addition in 1958 there was an Anson C-19, and also the first Hastings arrived, TG-503. BCBS reduced in size quite dramatically in 1959 and 1960 and in the latter year there seemed to be only four Lincolns left, but this type was being replaced by Hastings. All the Lincolns had gone by 1961, with eight Hastings, including the forerunner TG-503, having replaced them. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, 721 Mobile Radar Bomb Score Signals Unit was lodged on a dispersal on the eastern side of the airfield. 721's role was to track strike aircraft during simulated bombing runs at high and low level and score the accuracy of the simulated attacks against designated targets within a radius of approximately 50 miles of Lindholm. Radar operators on the ground had to pick up and then lock onto the aircraft whose track was then printed onto a chart in the operations caravan. Prior to the simulated weapon release the aircraft would transmit a steady tone on the radio which ceased at the release point. Following the simulated release the aircraft would then transmit a coded message that provided the MERPSU with the information necessary to score the attack. The results being passed to the aircraft in another coded message. The unit was capable of handling aircraft at 10 minute intervals. By 1968 the Bomber Command Bombing School had become Strike Command Bombing School and in 1972 moved out. Hangars were used for storage by a USAF detachment during the height of the Cold War and later for various RAF ground units and strike command stores, where parts for frontline aircraft were stored. Lindholm also had an interesting approach pattern with a visual circuit of 800 feet. This was so that the approach did not interfere with the approach for neighboring RAF Finningley's Runway 20. During the late 1950s a site was built to house the Type 82 radar and operational control building that controlled three air defense Bristol Bloodhound SAM-1 missile sites distributed within a 25-mile radius of the site. The site was part of the Fighter Command Air Defense Network and was called a Tactical Control Center. It became operational around 1961 and undertook these tasks for the duration of the SAM-1 missile lifespan before going over to area radar control functions. There were similar sites at RAF North Luffenham and RAF Wadden. RAF Lindholm was home to the Humber Radar Installation, later called Northern Radar as part of the Linesman-Mediator system. Northern Radar was a jack crew located at the RAF Lindholm site that housed discreetly on the opposite side of the A614 road to the airfield. Northern Radar was one of a number of jack crews around the UK whose civil tasks were to provide area radar cover for the then three area air traffic control centres. Scottish, Preston, and London. Jet crews were created to provide this area radar cover as the ATCCs did not have radar facilities and were purely procedural control centers. The jet crews were located at RAF units using civil and military staff and radio communications, but military radar. Other jet crews in the UK included Southern Radar at Sopley near Bournemouth, Western Radar at Aberperth in Wales, Ulster Radar at Bishop's Court in Northern Ireland, Eastern Radar at Wadden in East Anglia. Border Radar at Bulmer in the northeast of England, Highland Radar at Buchan in the north of Scotland and Midland Radar at North Luffenham in Rutland. All of which came under the control of military air traffic operations. Northern Radar's role was as an at crew providing radar services to civil and military aircraft in the lower, middle and upper airspace within its designated area of operations. The airspace above flight level 245 was known as a mandatory radar service area within which civil and military aircraft were placed under radar control. Beneath the MRSA all aircraft operating outside controlled airspace were provided with a radar advisory service. The site had a Type 82 radar installation but it also had remote links to other military radar heads. In mid-1960s to the early 1970s Lindholm was being used as a weekend gliding airfield by the Humber Gliding Club a member of the Royal Air Force Gliding and Soaring Association. It was used extensively by the Sheffield Scouting Movement as a base for gliding activities to attain scout airman badges. By 1980 Lindholm had been reduced to the status of a relief landing ground for RAF Finningley. In 1974 RAF Lindholm became home to 643 Gliding School Air Training Corps. 
643 G's moved in from RAF Hemswell on 1st of April. They operated winch launched cadet MK3 and Sedberg gliders conducting air experience and glider pilot training for air cadets. 643 G's remained at Lindholm until the airfield closed in 1982 whereupon they moved to RAF Scampton. By 1985 the whole camp was sold and turned into Lindholm. The last RAF connection, an automatic routing installation, which opened on May 25, 1983 and was run by 840 Signals Unit was closed in March 1996. It occupied the old Northern Radar Building ground floor, refurbished to accommodate the telegraphic automatic routing equipment and a manual telegraphic switching center and was parented by RAF Finningley. The TAR was a dual suite for NT Argus 500 computer system, each suite having a 64K word core store and two 2 MB hard drives and running software written using Coral 66. Before installation at Lindholm this TAR, one of two, had been installed in transportable cabins, originally destined for RAF GON or RAF Episcopy. Though hard standings were constructed at the intended sites the cabins were never deployed, having been overtaken by defense cuts. The tears were stored and then removed from the cabins. The first was installed at RAF Boddington as number 9 signals unit and the second eventually arrived at Lindholm. The opening of 840 signals unit allowed the RAF to close the signals unit at RAF Stanbridge and sell off a large part of that site. It also gave the Defense Communications Network much needed diversity by providing a third tear at a critical point in the Cold War. The unit was commanded by a squadron leader of the engineering branch and was divided into two flights, engineering flight and operations flight. As the unit operated 24 hours a day a watch system was worked with a small engineering shift and a larger operations shift with a warrant officer running each watch. The following units were here at some point. Thanks for watching.